हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इन साइड फिजिक्स आई एम श्रीनिवास टुडे वी विल डिस्कस मोशन इन ए प्लेन दैट मींस टू डायमेंशनल मोशन सो इट इज ए टॉपिक इन प्लस वन सिलेबस एंड इट इज एन इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक रिगार्डिंग टू डायमेंशनल मोशन प्रियर टू दिस there is one chapter in that is straight line motion one dimensional motion and we have discussed some topics in one dimensional motion in previous classes today we will discuss what is motion in a plane or two dimensional motion here any object that is moving in two dimensional way that is moving in a plane is called a projectile okay when an object is moving in a two dimensional motion it is called a projectile okay. for a projectile there there are two components of velocity in its motion okay so when it is moving and covering see it is a two dimensional motion when it is covering a horizontal as well as vertical displacements then it is called a two dimensional motion so this this is x axis this is y axis and an object is thrown at an angle and it is moving in this way and it is covering in this motion during this motion it is covering both the horizontal distance and the vertical distance see at this point this is the horizontal distance this is the vertical distance at this point this is the horizontal distance this is the vertical distance at this point this is the horizontal distance this is the vertical distance okay so in this way an object is going on and on covering both horizontal and vertical that is two way projection and at the same time it is also having the velocities both in horizontal and vertical directions also so this motion is called a curvilinear motion or two dimensional motion of an object so when this object is thrown at an angle between 0 to 90 degrees an object is thrown between the angle of projection this one is theta between 0 to 90 degrees then this projection is called oblique projection oblique projection and when this angle of projection is theta is equal to 0 degrees this is called horizontal projection horizontal projection okay so when it is an oblique projection and when it is a horizontal projection we see how will the diagram look like when an object is projected horizontally means in this way so object is thrown horizontally and see the angle here the angle of projection with respect to x axis is you can say 0 degrees theta is equal to 0 degrees this is called horizontal projection this is called oblique projection okay now we see the equations of motion for these two cases and the equation of motion represents a parabola a parabolic equation this equations of motion of the object in case of horizontal projection and in case of an oblique projection 
they represent these equations of motion represent a parabola we will see how see when it is a horizontal projection when it is a horizontal projection see the diagram looks like i already drawn this one like this horizontal projection the distance covered is x and the with the velocity here the initial velocity is u okay now the when an object is thrown and in this way it's covered at distance of x then we can write u is equal to distance by time if t is the time covered t is the time traveled to cover a distance x then is the, this is equal to u by x <coughs> then we can write time is equal to x by u okay so in this is regarding the horizontal direction see when we consider the vertical displacement this is the vertical displacement covered by the object we can write can use the equation of motion formula like h is equal to ut plus half z t square here in place of a we put z because the when you when an object is moving down in vertical direction it travels under the action of gravity so here if you write the vertical displacement as y see the any the velocity in the vertical direction at the starting point is zero so here zero plus half g in place of t you put x square by in place of t you put x by u okay so this is equal to y is equal to half g by u square into x square so here if you consider this part as m is equal to g by 2 u square we can write y is equal to m x square see this equation represents a parabola okay so a horizontal project horizontally projected body is following an equation of a parabola so the path the path that means the trajectory the equation of the trajectory can be written in the form of a parabola so we we see the same equation how it can be reduced in case of a oblique projection in case of an oblique projection okay so in case of an oblique projection we know that the velocity is having two components okay and it's also covering the horizontal and vertical distances at the same time so we can write the the oblique projection of a projectile is a, is, this is a trajectory now we will prove that the trajectory is nothing but an equation of a parabola if you consider a point here see and we if you draw the a tangent to the direction of velocity see here we can divide the velocity 
the object into two components this is u cos theta and this is u sin theta okay the distance this is the maximum point at which it reaches and this is the x is the horizontal distance and this one y from here to here y is the vertical distance that it, it is covering while going in the oblique projection okay so here proceeding in the same way see we know that the distance covered the time taken to distance to cover the distance x is equal to we know that from v is equal to distance velocity displacement by time that time is equal to distance by velocity and here the velocity component is the horizontal component you can write u cos theta See, I have taken this equation from this one speed is equal to distance by time. So time is equal to distance by speed. So time is equal to distance covered by the speed means here when it is going in an oblique trajectory the horizontal component will, will be responsible to cover the horizontal distance the vertical component is responsible to cover the vertical distance okay so here next if we consider the vertical component and again we can write the equation as ut minus half zt square here in place of a it will consider acceleration is equal to negative of gravity because this is in vertical direction the direction of the projectile is in vertical and the gravity will be acting downwards it is moving upwards so the negative direction sign indicates that the motion and the gravity are in opposite directions okay so here in case of vertical displacement what is the component of velocity that we have to consider u is equal to u sin theta vertical component of velocity is the velocity responsible to cover the vertical distance so here in place of a you know this equation equation of motion from a right line motion there are equations of motion and this is I have taken from this equation of motion which we have derived in the previous classes ut plus half a t square from this we have taken that displacement is vertical displacement y ut in place of a we have put minus g so this equation has become this one so we know that in one dimensional motion there are six equations of motion like this and we have used them and we have already derived in the previous classes so here the component of velocity is u sin theta so if you put in place of u the vertical component u sin theta okay into t what is t here x by u cos theta minus half z t square you put this one x square u square cos square theta okay so here u you gets cancelled and this is tan theta x minus here x square you put if you put z by 2 u square 
cos square theta into x square right so if you see this equation this is looking like y is equal to ax plus bx square which is the equation of a parabola ax plus see if you take in plus here it, the g will become here we can take g as minus see this equation looks like equation of a parabola ax plus b x square if you still want to see it clearly in place of a this is in place of b so this is looking like an equation of a parabola ax plus b x square so this is how we can say that a uh, projectile when it is moving in a oblique trajectory the trajectory of an projectile is nothing but an equation of a parabola so any projectile which is thrown obliquely will follow a path of a parabola see what are the examples of a projectile see a cricket ball thrown at an angle and a kicked football kicked with foot see generally a football is kicked with foot and it follows a path see it follows a trajectory and it touches the ground at some point covering a distance and a missile see a fired missile is also a, an example of oblique projection that is projectile so here in case of projectiles there are some the formulas that we have to derive that means the maximum height time of ascent time of flight so we will see some formulas in case of an oblique projection in case of a projectile see first we will derive the formula for maximum height reached maximum height reached by a projectile see what is the maximum height reached means when a projectile is thrown at an angle whether it is a vertical projection or an oblique projection see this is the when it is covering an object a trajectory in this path this is the maximum height this is the maximum height so we will see the maximum height and we will derive the formula for the maximum height of this formula we know that from the equations equation of motion in one dimensional v square minus u square is equal to 2 as okay here if you consider this equation and when you say the final velocity at highest point will be zero right and the to reach the highest point what is the component of velocity responsible to reach the highest point that is u sin theta so velocity component will be u sin theta so if you consider v is zero and see here initial velocity we, sh we should take the component vertical component here u square sin square theta is equal to minus 2 g in place of s this is actually equation of motion from one dimensional motion we are applying that equation to a two dimensional motion by considering the velocity components okay see this is a one dimensional equation of motion and we are taking this into two dimensional motion by considering the velocity components we are dividing the velocity into two components so this s is nothing but the height 
covered by the projectile. So in this way we can write u square sin square theta is equal to and we can write the height maximum height reached is equal to u square sin square theta by 2g. Okay. So this is the maximum height h reached by a projectile and following a, an oblique trajectory path. Okay. So next, what is the time of ascent? Time of ascent. What is time of ascent and time of descent? In case of a projectile, time of ascent means the time taken to the time taken from the point of project on projection to reach the maximum height or exactly at the middle in this path it will be at exactly at the middle the maximum height point will be there so the time of ascent means the time taken from the point of projection to the highest point so we will see what is the time of ascent here So here we can write use the equation of motion as this is the equation of motion from one dimensional motion. So here at the highest point velocity is equal to zero. If it an oblique pro, if a projectile reaching the maximum highest point, the vertical component of velocity will be zero. Here u is vertical component u sin theta minus g this is time of ascent t is time of ascent so we can write from this equation u sin theta by g okay so this is the time of ascent for a projectile and from this we can write what is total time of flight. If an object is thrown and it is reaching a maximum point and we have called it as maximum time of ascent to reach the maximum height and from there it will be coming down and will, and will reach the next point. So the time of descent this is from here to here time of ascent and from here to here that is time of descent time of ascent plus time of descent is called time of ascent plus time of descent is called total time of flight time of flight So, we will derive the formula for total time of flight. In this way, we can, if you logically observe, the time taken for a projectile to reach the maximum height from there and the time taken to reach the next point will be equal to the time of ascent. That means the time of ascent and time of descent will be equal. In that case, we can write total time of flight as 2u sin theta by z. So this is logically we can say when an, when an object is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity v and it will reach the ground with the same velocity. In that way, we can write this time of total time of flight as double the time of ascent that means time of ascent plus time of descent is equal to time of flight and we will derive how this equation also will be coming see we know that from equations of motion ut plus half a t square okay so if s is the height 
okay here s is the height and here if you consider the vertical component we are calculating total time of flight that means if you consider the vertical component u sin theta into t minus half z t square okay so here here see the maximum height is applied time of flight is equal to and see here this will become if you take this one as zero okay and this equation is becoming and if you write u sin theta t is equal to of z t square and t t will be getting cancelled okay so in this way you can write t is equal to 2u sin theta by z So this is the total time of flight. Okay. See the displacement, the vertical displacement will be zero here because the point from where it is projected will be coming and, and coming down and it touches the ground. So the vert vertically the displacement will be zero. So this is the time of flight and we have seen just now that the time of flight is time of ascent plus time of descent. Okay. Now we will see what is the range, horizontal range. That means the definition of range of a projectile is when it is thrown at an oblique angle, that means following a trajectory. In a projectile motion the horizontal distance covered the horizontal distance covered by a projectile is called the range suppose this distance is x meters see the range of this projectile is x meter we will see what is the range here how to calculate the range of a projectile See, generally the horizontal distance is how will we will calculate the horizontal distance is the velocity into time horizontal distance is equal to velocity or speed into time okay so here range horizontal distance range is equal to the velocity what is the horizontal component of velocity u cos theta into time what is the time total time of flight just we have seen how to derive total time of flight and we know that 2u sin theta by z okay from here we can write 2 u square we can write u square 2 sin theta cos theta by z and from this we can write sin 2 sin theta cos theta as sin 2 theta we know that 2 sin theta cos theta is equal to sin 2 theta and u square sin 2 theta by z this is the range of a projectile horizontal range of a projectile and this means 
range is the horizontal distance not vertical distance horizontal distance covered by the projectile okay see when will be this horizontal distance or range will be maximum for a projectile when will be the maximum if you observe this formula sin 2 theta so sin value will be between 0 and 1 right sin value will be always between 0 and 1 so when will this range will be maximum means when the sin value is 1 only then the range will be maximum see this sin 2 theta has to be 1 then only the range will be maximum because sin value will be fluctuating between 0 and 1 so in this case if you take sin 2 theta is equal to 1 that means if you write sin 2 theta is equal to 1 so you can write from this 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees that is theta is equal to 45 degrees see if you see this one theta is equal to 45 degrees if theta is equal to 45 degrees then the range of a projectile is maximum from this formula okay so this is how we will go into the details of a projectile and in the next class we will see some more formulas and more derivations in case of a projectile and we will do some problems in the projectile motion okay thank you